Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host Lovely Cheese Pizza here. Welcome back to Let's Play some more Gran Turismo 3, the ultimate driving simulator. We have run into a problem. And not like a really big problem. It's it's a it's a minor inconvenience on the side road to success. Basically what happened, somebody in the comment section last video let me in on this secret that we kind of fucked up a little bit. <laughs> so with this Corvette Z06 that we just bought and totally tricked the hell out of it, by installing that port polish, we now cannot use this car in the uh, Trial Mountain 2 hour endurance because that is an upgrade that you can't take out and that you know, that challenge requires regular only cars, and so, eh, not gonna be able to use it, but it's totally okay. Um, I mean, eventually what we'll be able to do is we'll probably end up buying another one, or maybe just a different car uh, of similar power, and we'll kind of use that instead. The thing with this Corvette, though, is that we will be able to use this thing in so many challenges from this point on. Like, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. We'll be using it for the Stars and Stripes Cup here. We'll be using it in a number of amateur league things. And so it's it's really not going to make a giant difference. The only thing that's going to suck here is that I probably won't be able to finish the beginner league in the way that I had wanted to. Because uh, by doing the Stars and Stripes Cup here, I don't think that we're going to make enough money that we will be able to uh, go you know straight into the Beetle Cup and finish that. And because we won't have enough money, likely, to go out and buy another vehicle to jump into the, t uh, the Trial Mountain 2-hour endurance, we'll probably have to jump into the Amateur Cup for a few things before we head back and finish those up. So it's going to be a little messy. It it's not how I intended this to go. But, you know, it's, it's a game I haven't played in a long time, and <laughs> sometimes you make a couple of mistakes here and there. But you know what? The nice thing is we get to jump into this insanely gorgeous vehicle and we are just gonna fucking clean house. I mean, it's gonna be so... It's gonna be so bad for these guys. <laughs> they are not gonna stand a single chance in hell or in heaven or in any other, you know, location on the way there. I mean, we are going to mop the fucking floor with these fools. And I'm talking not just like a little bit. We're gonna be using some serious industrial clean up a crime scene grade liquid surfactants here. It's gonna be <laughs> But again, like I said, we're gonna use this car for a lot of things and, and the, the nice thing here is that it's going to give me a really good opportunity to kind of learn how to use this vehicle for when we're gonna be doing harder challenges because this thing's got a lot of power and while I do have racing tires on it, still gonna take a little bit of doing before I really you know, become fully comfortable in, in how I go about using it. Because we'll be using it in, seriously, a very sizable chunk of events in uh, in the Amateur League. Because I think they actually have, like, an American Championship in there where we can win some good money. And I think that this thing should be well within its own ability to, to hold its own in there. Um, but things like you know, the, the GT World Championship in there, I don't think it's going to be able to, to stack up necessarily in there unless, you know, we have, you know, we'll probably have to wait until we get a vehicle, you know, more like like the Denso Sard Supra or maybe like the Team Oreca Viper, which, oh boy, if I get my hands on one of those, I, I might soil myself with excitement. But for now, this is going to most certainly do well. So here's the thing. Now, you know, since we're going to be able to kind of have a nice little cakewalk in the park for a few races, as it would seem, um, let's let's talk about a couple of things. I, I read about two things over the last, like, 48 hours <laughs> that are on polar opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of one of them being super, super awesome, the other one being super, super uncomfortable. The, 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 scale, the scale between which is unheard of by... <laughs> by the general population. So, we'll uh, we'll start with the good and we'll end with the weird. I think that's I think that's not a bad way to go. So, let's yeah, let's 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 get down with the good one first. How would you to 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 really kind of preface this thing, I guess. How would you feel if you went out in your backyard and you dug a hole essentially? I uh, the 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 the, uh, the details might be a little bit different than this altogether, but I mean, how would you feel, in essence, if you went out in your backyard 
and you dug a hole and you basically stumbled upon you know one of the craziest you know best kept secrets of the last like of the last like thousand years <laughs> like that's basically what happened with this dude I think it was in England actually he uh, I think uh, I and I I might I, I may have some of the details wrong from this but the end result will still be correct but I think this guy he lives in England and I think he had like a farm or something and he stumbled across like a rabbit hole on his property and so I think he went to you know he went to go check it out and I think he was gonna like dig it up to kind of you know maybe fix it up or whatever and he dug into this rabbit hole and he decided to check it out a little bit and see kind of how far it goes and the next thing he finds out is that this thing this little rabbit hole like leads down into this crazy super elaborate cave system that believe it or not actually was used 700 years ago by the Knights Templar it's actually probably a little bit more than that now I think it was probably closer to like 800 years but I think in the article it said 700 but that's like one of the most insane things ever like how crazy would you feel to re to know that you have this crazy ass cave systems that was used by one of the world's great secret societies well nowadays I mean back then it was a fairly prominent deal they had like 20,000 members at their peak for those of you that don't know who, you know who or what the Knights Templar was um, they were an organization that was established back in like the 1100s, so uh, it was a long time ago. But I think that their last their last year active was like the early 1300s, and uh, they were they were an organization that was essentially I think they used to I think they used to be called um, like the Order of Solomon's Temple or something like that, and they were involved in the Crusades. Like they were they were like a uh, I think they were like a Catholic uh, they were like a Catholic military order and they were involved in in the Crusades and uh, and so there was a lot of shit going on with that but I think that there are still to this day I think that there's still some active members of the Knights Templar I could be wrong but I think that there's still like you know four or five hundred of them out there across the world so it's like one of the world's great secret societies these days and so for for that to have been kind of uncovered is a super super awesome find kind of makes you wonder though like what's the government going to do about that like are they going to like seize that guy's property and like not allow him to be there anymore while they start you know fumbling around on his property trying to figure out you know where this uh, crazy labyrinthine cave system goes or are they just going to be like hey you can uh, you know you you keep you keep going about your day you know jacking off the goats and and uh you know, we're just gonna come by every once in a while and send a couple of dudes down in there. You know, you can, uh, you'll, you'll never hear from us again until you hear from us again, kind of thing. Like, I don't even know. Like, does he, does this guy get like a giant sum of money or something for, you know, <laughs> for basically unearthing this crazy, you know, historical discovery or what, like, what the hell's gonna go on with that? Are they gonna give him like a gift card to Best Buy and, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe like a, maybe like a couple of free cheeseburgers and a beer. Like, I mean, the guy's got to get some type of compensation for something of this magnitude, you would think. But who knows? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm way off on that. But yeah, so, so that's like the super cool thing. Like, I would love, I would love to be able to go down and check that out. Like, who knows what the hell they're gonna find in there when once they actually start like going all the way in and checking it out. Like, there's probably gonna be like dead bodies down there maybe like a possible giant monetary horde stash um, and not to be confused with a whore mustache I mean the the terms whore stash and horde stash <laughs> are uncomfortably similar so I don't know it's gonna be really cool but the other thing and uh, for the for the other topic here is <laughs> it's so stupid and disgusting I don't know. I, I want to say that this. I want to say this lady was French, but we're kind of moving into a weird age of time where people are really, really pushing the lines of what's acceptable and what's not in terms of like, you know, having relations with things. Like bestiality's been around for a long time. That's never been a cool thing. If you've ever seen the Mr. Hand video, you know exactly what that's all about. Which just the mere thought of that makes me cringe at the seams. It is. It is awful, but um, but this one, 
this one. This isn't this isn't anything like bestiality, but it's still really weird. Like it kind of has it has a very like Rick and Morty feel to it for me. There's a lady, and I believe that she's French, and she she got engaged. <laughs> she got engaged to a robot that she built. She built a robot. She's getting engaged to it. And I'm pretty sure if I, I could be wrong on this too, but it would not surprise me. I'm pretty sure they've engaged in the freaking hibbity dibbity, you know, like it was, it, you know, she was hiding the metallic purple headed uh, yogurt slinger right into her freaking ying yod. Like what the hell, man? How do we can't be doing this? This is, this is 2017. Like you would think that that type of thing shouldn't be going on until at least like 2100 when we're all dead and off the earth and <laughs> the next wave of people can have fun with it. I don't want to be hearing anything about that. <laughs> it's just not okay. But I and I don't know if there is like some sort of like legal thing going on with that or if it was just the idea that it's just totally fucking creepy and that it shouldn't be happening at all. <laughs> I think that's really more of probably what it is. But like imagine that. Imagine like being imagine being like her parents or her friends like Imagine going out, like, going out to a bar, you know, to, to get drinks or, you know, to just, you know, go check out a movie or, you know, go do anything at all in public. And, you know, you're, you're bringing, you're bringing your significant other and they're like, uh, who are you going to bring with you tonight, Tamara? And she's like, oh, well, I'm going to bring, uh, I'm going to bring my, my fiance. Oh, really? Who is he? Well, his name is, uh, his name is Husband Bot 2.0. <laughs> like, and they're like, are you fucking kidding me? She's like, no, no, I'm. I'm actually engaged to a robot, and they're like, "Well, I think that uh, we should probably reschedule because uh, both of us just uh, started projectile vomiting in the living room. I, I, it must be the flu or something. I don't know. We'll call you later." Oh. <laughs> you know, that's just uh, that is that is super uncomfortable. Maybe there will be a day where you know the idea of getting involved in in uh, weird human relationships with with robots will be a fully acceptable thing. I don't know. There's just, there's something that's way too, you know, sci-fi original series about that. And I don't mean like the good sci-fi original series, because I don't even know if there really are any. I mean, you can make the argument for, for Sharknado all you want, but I don't think that I'm going to follow suit with that. Like, I don't find them as good movies. I, I really don't. I, I think that they are terrible movies. But, again, I made this argument a long time ago. Or, well, not a long time ago. It was like a few episodes ago. They're terrible movies that are entertaining. So they are at least achieving, you know, one, I would say, one fairly significant point out of it. But as far as the actual quality of the movie is concerned, it's a crazy tire. It's, it's a tire fire that is, you know, rolling down the street of the largest city in America. That's, that is... That is what it is. And it's like multiple tire fire. It's like a gang of tires just, you know, collectively destroying the, uh, you know, the, the taxpayer-funded streets of the world. Okay. We're doing very well right now. This is good. I got a feeling that we're probably going to be doing things like Laguna Seca at a later point in time on harder courses. So getting used to this is good. I feel like... I feel like even though this is an amateur challenge and we're kicking everyone's ass, I feel like, uh, you know, we still did it fairly clean. We didn't really have a lot of, you know, turns that got away from us. I think I, I think that this might be, strangely enough, the car that I'm kind of the most comfortable with driving. Like, we, we did okay with, um, with the Evo for a while. And, uh... But I don't know. Like we had times with that Evo where we got a, we kind of got a little out of control with it. I think with this, we're doing significantly better. I I would say. We have one race left. Should I do it? I think I should do it. We we're we're going to we're going to check it out. We're going to check it out. I think that I think I kind of owe this one to uh to you guys after I, you know, made the mistake of being an ass of dumbness. So, but uh, not, not, you know, at all related to uh, Mr. Tumnus from, um, what the hell was that from? It's, uh, um, fucking, uh, da -da 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 -da, Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe, is that what that's from? I don't know. I can't remember. It's, it's early in the morning. I'm, I'm very, I'm very not used to being up, you know, and, well, actually not used to being up. It, it's, it's, 
like in 12:45 in the afternoon. It's more that I'm not used to having Saturdays off. This is this is a this is a this is very uh very untraveled territory for me. I'm generally working right now, you know, dealing with uh with tons of freight and having to deal with asshole people. So, the fact that I'm able to sit here in my office while uh while, you know, my fiance is watching uh, from a re remote location, it's pretty exciting, man. She uh, and she works for uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, and uh, hey, it's good stuff, man. So she decided, uh, you know, while while she's got me on the line, you know, I'm we're FaceTiming while she's at work, even though you know I'm currently on mute right now because <laughs> pretty sure the people that are in calls with her probably would not want to be hearing my voice, uh, you know, recording videos for YouTube right now while they're trying to, you know, settle their, uh, you know, their, their planned cruise to the location of their choice. So, but uh, every once in a while I can, I can kind of peek over and, and, uh, get a, get a look at her, get a look at that lovely face of hers while she's, uh, while she's working. Kind of cool. Dude, the, the invention of FaceTime is just the greatest thing. <laughs> Because for I mean for us we we live 60 mile you know 60 plus miles away from each other, so we don't always have the opportunity of being able to see each other every day. So this is kind of you know this is kind of one of our little things that we can do that still allows us to see each other, you know when we're not able to physically you know be in each other's company. So I love it. It's good stuff. All right. Whoa. On the plus side, so this is another thing that I'm thinking about doing before we jump into uh, the Amateur Cup. We've got one more license left to get. And I know they're like, oh, come on, Adam, you really want to spend time getting more licenses again? Well, it, it's, you know, it is it is a necessary component of the game. Like, we, we kind of have to get them. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. It's a thing that they, you know, they want you to take the roles. And so we're going to. We're totally going to do that. I don't know why. Every single time I look at this area right here, it just, it totally takes me back to fear. Uh, I think it's fear, it's fear three, where you're out on the highway and like the entire world is being torn asunder by, by Alma. It, it's, <laughs> it has, like, there's just a couple of moments in that game when you're out on the freeway that the, like, the, the kind of the skyscape has a similar look. It's just in that game, it's a lot more, you know, red and apocalyptic looking. But it still has some of that kind of weird, kind of orange tint to it, and so I can't help but think of that every time. But, yeah, man, we've, we've got to get that S-Class license. I mean, it won't really apply at all until much further into the game. I think we won't even need those things until probably, like, the professional area, um, as far as I can remember. So, but, you know, it's something that I feel like I should get out of the way so that I'm not being you know, oddly surprised by a later, you know, 100 episodes from now where I'm like, oh, well, let's let's go jump into our first S-Class race. And it's like, hey, you motherfucker, you don't have the license for that, so <laughs> you should probably think about doing something on that, by the way. It'd be a pretty good idea. And so with that, I think what we'll do this next episode is we'll jump into that and get it out of the way so that we don't have to look at its ugly mug anymore. And then we can move on with our life and it'll be fantastic. And then from there, we'll be able to move into uh, the Amateur the amateur Cup. It only took us, what, like 40 plus episodes to get in there? <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be a long haul. Dude, you had to give me this car. Of all the cars you could have given me. Why didn't, why couldn't you have given me, like, a Mustang? The, the car that I was actually thinking about using, if I wasn't going to use uh, the Corvette, for uh, for that endurance race was actually going to be uh, the uh, the Mustang because it for itself has pretty good horsepower actually it's uh I think aside the fact that it's a Ford good God um, it's actually I mean it's got 384 horsepower like that is well within it's uh you know it's it's well within range of being perfectly suitable to do that challenge so. Kind of a nifty thing. So, for now, my friends, I think we're going to stop right here. And when we come back on the next installment of Let's Play Gran Turismo 3, we're going to go. We're going to go back into the old uh, into the old license place, and we're gonna we're gonna figure that out. I need to sell this thing. I just oh god, it's so heinous. It's so heinous. <laughs> oh god, yeah, we're gonna get rid of this thing. All right, guys. Well, 
This is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. We'll be back to do more stuff. Take care, everybody. Bye.